Joining us now on the hotline, a man who has covered Arizona Wildcat football for over 20 years. Uh, he's with the Wildcat Report right now. He's also the senior editor of Lindy's Football Magazines. Please welcome to the show Anthony Gemino. Anthony, welcome to the program. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me on. So you, of, of maybe any school in the country, has had a pretty wild first half of the season right now, 5-1, and one, but it hasn't been easy getting to that 5-1, and one, has it? Uh, Arizona's been, uh, I guess, fun to cover. Maybe that's maybe fun is the right word. You know, in in their three conference games, one game was decided on the final play, which was a 47-yard hail mary. Um, last week's game was decided on the second to last play, which was a 36-yard missed field goal. And the other game just happened to be an upset at number two Oregon, which was in doubt in the final minute or two. So Arizona is one of those teams, like a lot of the Pac-12 teams that is basically going to take every game down to the wire. They're good enough to compete with everybody, but not really good enough to separate from anybody else. And I think that's kind of the whole theme of the Pac-12 this year. Have you noticed Coach Rodriguez's hair color change at all over these uh, last six weeks? <laughs> I, I've noticed that it has thinned in the past few years. Hey, well, arrived. welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there may be some of that going around. Um, yeah, he, like everybody else, has just kind of rode the wild wave of emotions with Arizona. But, you know, I think it, it, these kind of things almost always have a way of balancing out. You know, they probably uh, they shouldn't have beaten Cal on the last second play, and they probably should have beaten USC last week. And as it turns out, they, they win the one they shouldn't and lose the one they should win or something like that, and lo and behold, they're 5-1, and one, which big picture if you were just parachuting into the season – Five and one for Arizona right now is pretty darn good. And is that sentiment kind of echoing through the locker room right now? You have a bye week, so you don't play until October 25th against Washington State. Is the team happy with where it is right now? Yeah, I think happy would be too strong of a word just because of the way the last game ended. Um, Rich is always really good at getting his guys refocused, whether it's after a win or a loss. So I think they'll have – moved on by the time they hit the practice field um, and then start preparing for Washington State in uh, a week and a half. Uh, so happy, happy is probably a little too much, but again, big picture, are they in a pretty good place? Yeah, I guess so, but I think most of the Pac-12 South feels the same way too because you know four teams have one loss, and then you're looking at UCLA, which is in total desperation mode now that they've lost twice. Anthony, this is Bruce Benkowski. We, we've been obviously following the Pac-12 very closely, and uh, the one thing I've noticed, and I asked, uh, we had Ted Tolner, the uh, former SC San Diego State head coach, on earlier t- tonight, and uh, Oregon scoring over 30 points a game, Arizona is scoring points like crazy, Arizona State. I asked him this question, so I'll ask you, is it great offense, bad defense, or a combination of both in the Pac-12? Mm, there's a lot of fantastic offensive minds in the league, so... I think the league is on the the cutting edge of so many things offensively that I would lean towards that. But also you look, is there a great defense in the league? No. Uh, There's not, you know, if we looked across the country and looked at, say, an SEC team, the way Ole Miss is playing defense right now, or even the way Mississippi State may be playing defense right now, I don't think there's one of those teams that just has an absolutely shut down week in and week out defensive front. So I think that makes, and that also leads to the parity and some of the unpredictability is you don't know exactly what team or what defense is going to show up every week. You know, sometimes USC gives up 450 rushing yards to Boston college. Sometimes they give up over 500 passing yards to Arizona state. And sometimes like last week, they look, really, really good against Arizona. So if I, I, am un, I am unable to unlock the key to figuring out um, some of the league's defenses or who's going to show up on any particular Saturday. So I think the, the offenses are, are going to continue to be really difficult to stop. We're talking to uh, Anthony Gemino and uh, he covers Arizona football. And uh, you're, you're, can we call you a Pac-12 expert as well? 
I don't know. That, that sounds awful. <laughs> well, you know, just go with it. Just, just go, go with, with it. it. Come on. <laughs> hey, hey uh, a, a question about that. Uh, right now, we're halfway through the Pac-12 uh, schedule. We've got six teams in the conference that only have one loss. Certainly, they're going to start playing each other and beating each other up. But at this halfway point, is there one team that stands out like you're kind of surprised that they're as good as they are at Utah 4-1, uh, Arizona 5-1, and one, Arizona State 4-1? and one. Anybody in there that you go, wow, I'm surprised? Yeah, I think so far to me, Arizona has looked better than I thought they would. Uh, Utah right now seems to be the team that I think the Pac-12 thought it was getting when it expanded, which is um, a physical, um, just tough-minded team that week in and week out is going to be really hard to beat. And we've seen Utah this year against UCLA – um, even last year, they're able to pull off an upset against a really highly ranked team. So I think that's the team everybody expected Utah to be. Maybe not a great team year in and year out, but when they put the pieces together, they can be awfully good. And if you look, if you look around the league, I think Cal is easily probably the most improved team, which does not surprise me because I think Sonny Dykes is a fantastic head coach, and and last year will end up being an anomaly on his record. And as he starts getting some defensive pieces, he's going to be really tough to deal with in future years as well. And there's just not – you look around the league, there's just – where where do you go for an easy win? You can't take I, a break. I mean, even Washington can't. State I mean, was the – was 0-3 in the league, but they're really close to a couple of victories, and they're much better while being extremely young. So they're only going to get better, and they've – certainly found their quarterback now. So I think the, uh, the league right now is certainly as deep and talented as, as I've seen it, and it's hard to see it going backwards because you have, all, you have, the, coach, you have the right coaches in place at the right schools. And college football is so much, about, so much about coaching. And I think a few years ago teams really started to identify – the right guys to lead their programs. Top to bottom, it, it really does even rival the SEC. It, it may even be stronger than the SEC. It might be. I think you could make that case. Um, I'm not sure. And, then, and the thing that's going to hurt the Pac-12 is, is if it doesn't get a team in the college football playoff. And with the way everybody's beating each other right now, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, I think the league – Probably needs Oregon to win out, um, but maybe even a two-loss Oregon as a Pac-12 champion could get into the college football playoff. That's going to be a just a fascinating discussion. There have been a lot for, of losses around the country, that's for sure. Yeah, for the selection committee, um, it's going to be really interesting to see how they sort everybody out because there, there are certainly going to be one-loss teams in the playoff, and a two-loss team – is certainly not out of the question by any means. Um, that would have actually happened in, probably would have happened in some years in the BCS, just based off of the BCS standings. There were two lost teams that finished in the top four in the, in the BCS rankings. So uh, that's certainly a possibility. And Oregon, among the Pac-12 schools, has the best shot of being that team if it has two losses. Anthony Gimino, who has covered the Arizona Wildcats for over 20 years, senior editor of Lindsay's Football Magazines. Uh, uh, Anthony, thanks for joining us with this Pac-12 update, and we may be talking to you again as we get closer to bowl season. Absolutely. Anytime. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Anthony.